Hello everybody, it is May 12th, 2020, time is about 12.15 CDT, it's about 62 degrees Fahrenheit out and it's GeoRant time and you may notice here that my camera, which is on my phone, is not in the usual place as it is in the middle, that's because the thing is falling off and I can't get it back to stay back up, but anyway, this might work out a little better, but anyway, this is GeoRant number 122 and I'm going to talk about metamorphic grades and index minerals from metamorphic rocks with a sedimentary protolith. Protolith just means parent rock. It means the rock, the metamorphic rock was divided into sedimentary rock. And why is that? Because certain minerals, as a rock becomes metamorphosed from sedimentary, usually mudstones, we use mudstones as a standard, and I'll get into his why in a second. But they, certain minerals, as, as it undergoes heat and pressure, will form from the existing mudstone that are good markers to tell you how metamorphic the rock is you know is it low grade medium grade high grade is it zeolite facies green schist facies blue schist whatever whatever okay and that's and mudstones have the right chemistry because clays and, and also so do argillaceous or clayey rocks like you know wacky sandstones with a significant amount of clays and um, you know, siltstones, clay siltstones and things like that will as well. And this also applies to those. What it does not apply to are things like quartz aronite sandstones, which are sandstones that are almost all quartz because quartz and most pure limestones, it, there is an exception with you. If you have some mud in there, epidote will like to form in the medium grade line and you'll see that in a chart, but most pure carbonate rocks and quartz aronites, quartz and carbonate minerals are very stable throughout the entire metamorphic process until melting occurs, or reoccurs if it gets to that point. So they're not going to change much. They're not index minerals for determining metamorphic facies. Okay, they're just always present in feldspars too. Feldspars are also very stable. So things like arcoses, even if are, are, cannot really be used unless it's an arcosic wacky and that wacky part, the mud part, forms other things. So this is something I'm working on, and I apologize, there's no references here, but any metamorphic petrology book will contain this information, um, as well as you can find this stuff online. I'm just going to show it to you real quick, and then at the end of this video, I'm going to show you something, because those of you who know me know my oldest cat, Ezra, passed uh, on April 22nd, and there's something here that I want to talk about briefly, but anyway, let me get through this as quickly as I can. Now, as you can see here, you see the title, and you can see index minerals and foliated rocks, which I'm just going to say mudstone, but when I say mudstone, I'm including things like wackies and siltstones with argillaceous siltstones, that kind of thing. But I'm just going to say mudstone or shale, okay, because uh, those are good, good markers too. And You'll see on top here, and a field a lot of times, you can just identify the rock based off its lithology in the field. But you might find something that you think is a slate. Then you take it back to the lab, and, 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 it, and it based off the minerals present, it's actually a schist. It's just weathered so much at your access point that it no longer looks like a schist. And that has to do with the chemistry. And that's why we use mudstones because they have the abundant minerals. I'm going to talk about this stuff here in a little bit, but you can see here basically what happens through low, medium, high grade metamorphism. And I have the facies down here. All right. Uh, that's on a different chart. I'm not going to talk about that here. It's a talk for another time, but you'll see here. You also see, I just want to mention this with nice and granulite. That's a dash there. The reason why that's a dash is because compositionally there's no difference between a nice and a granulate usually uh it's more of a textural thing so it's dashed there it's a talk for another time as well but as a rock undergoes metamorphism a mudstone it will start to if the chemistry is correct you will start to get certain mineral assemblages out of there and garnet's a good one because many of you probably heard of garnet schists uh garnet likes to form really cool good developed crystals in a lot of schists and garnet's one of the only ones i mean some of these will too on occasion but most of it's microscopic but garnets will form macroscopic crystals and i think that's kind of cool okay so but the, this this process will happen so if you see chlorite only you know the rock is low-grade metamorphism now i've looked at rocks where i've seen garnet and chlorite 
okay? Now, chlorite theoretically should, under, under continued heat and pressure, as we get to the garnish, should undergo a change. So why would chlorite be present again? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. Either the rock, because things can be metamorphosed, go through different different number of metamorphic events. The only thing doesn't have to be metamorphosed once. Things can have, you know, a mountain range can be made, eroded, and put back in another mountain range, causing a second metamorphic event, or deeply buried, becoming a third or fourth or whatever. And as that happens, you may get a reintroduction of something like chloride if the parent rock, the protolith, wasn't totally rearranged, or a hydrothermal event, you know, creates that you get that contact metamorphism going, or something like that, you can get a reintroduction of lower grade stuff. So it is common to see chloride and garnet, and you and may you may even see something like somonite in your metamorphic rock. Don't scratch your head. I <laughs> think because there are different, you know, things can undergo metamorphic, uh, metamorphic events more than once, okay? And a lot of times stuff won't be here like biotite, okay? You might not see biotite in your metamorphic rock. Why? Because the chemistry isn't there. If you don't have a clay-rich rock with a lot of potassium, you're not going to get biotite. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to form. Okay, so the chemistry has to be there. And that's why we use the mudstones because they have the most diverse chemistry out of most sedimentary rocks. So you might see like something on a geologic map with isograds, metamorphic isograds, where you'll see like a chloride zone. And then it might shift straight to garnet because there's, the, there's not enough there to make your muscovite and biotite. Okay, um, so and then what you'll also see here You'll see epidote here and in muddy carbonates because epidote will form under in muddy carbonates a lot in medium grade metamorphism. But it has asterisks here because it also occur, can occur up here. I just did this to conserve space. I didn't put it into two places, but I mentioned it below. And, you know, these are, there's 12 index minerals I feel are most relevant that I put here. There are often, I mean, there's nine on the front here 12 on the back uh, these nine are the most common on um, a lot of these charts you can see you can find online they only have two or three i wanted to make this as in-depth as possible this is the entire range uh they i could make this like faded to show you that it could start here it could start here it doesn't matter it could even start in the middle okay it, it just it's just within that block all right so I think, I don't know if I want to talk about any of this other stuff because I'm going to start getting into detail of chemistry and mineralogy. But, oh, one more thing I do want to turn here. A couple more things. You see, Andalusite, I have this M or whatever, and then for Kyanite, I have an L-M and an L-MP and then Sylmanite. Because those are trimorphic. What that means is the three of them tend, they, they can, um, they're all neosilicates. And they're closely related to one another. And you'll see a lot of metamorphic facies diagrams. That's the one where you see things like zeolite, green schist, granulite, amphibolite facies, you know, that kind of thing, a blue schist on there. You'll see those a lot of time. You'll see these three lines, and then they'll say andalusite, sulmonite, kyanite. That's because the three are closely related. They all have the exact same chemical formula, Al2SiO5. So Al2SiO5. We usually name minerals based off their crystal structure they can have the exact same chemical formula but if they form different crystals crystal structures they are different minerals and that's the case with andalusite and kyanite andalusite and kyanite have the exact same chemical formula but andalusite is orthorhombic kyanite is triclinic okay all right so they get different mineral names plus kyanite's very blue a lot of you may be familiar with it it's always usually very blue from these nice cool blades um sylmanite is also is um also orthorhombic with the same chemical formula as andalusite now there's a reason why it's broken out into different mineral which is also a talk for another time so <laughs> it doesn't that rule that same chemical formula, different crystal system doesn't all, always hold because here we have the same crystal formula with the or we have the same chemical formula with the same crystal system. We've given a new name. Like I said, that's a talk for another time. I'm not going to get into that here. So this is useful for basic petrographic analysis in the lab. Is basically why I am doing this, why I am making this thing. All right, and the eventual copy will be online and it will have references on it. 
I just wanted to show you guys this before I got going. And anyway, I'm going to show you something for Ezra. We obviously, this COVID-19 thing is still going on. I am back at the office, though. I'm part of the first wave to return. And Ezra, as most of you know, passed April 22nd. And his, his kitty, his little kitty gravestone came today. And I had to go pick it up. Um, you know, he, he was my best friend for 13 years. He was with me and he was either 15 or 16. That's the question mark after 2004. But anyway, I'm just going to show this to you. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions or comments or anything you want to mention about this chart, uh, you know, cause it's not all inclusive. It's not meant to be, and it is somewhat, you know, compacted. I uh, don't want it to be too busy. But anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments below, please leave them. I hope you learned something.